Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler and I wanted to talk to you about activity 3.1.5 part 2. What you see on the left side of your screen is what Project Lead the Way just wants you to type into the program and then they want you to investigate what happens when you run the program. So starting off at the beginning, you see that you have to declare a variable, we call it biggest, and this is all just the program they gave you to type up, just copy them for this chunk. Then we have an infinite loop, we have the start and end to our infinite loop. We uh, this shouldn't be 100, this should be 0. We have to start off our biggest number at something, and we're going to start off at 0. Then we check for our sensor value of the bump switch, so this little fella right here. If we're not pushing it, then we go through this little loop right here. And if our sensor value of the potentiometer is larger than what the biggest is already reading. So keep in mind, it's starting off at 0. So let's say the potentiometer is reading a 70. Well, biggest is less than that. So biggest now becomes equal to the sensor value of the potentiometer. Then we circle back through. Yes, this is still true. I'm not pushing the button, so I continue to go through this. And if I'm moving the potentiometer, this little fellow over here, then it will pick up its largest value. It will never pick up the smaller value. So if I max out the potentiometer and then decrease it, biggest will remember the largest value. Let's compile this program and run it and see what it looks like. Once it's up and running, uh, global variables might kind of be at the bottom. You can click on it and hold and drag up, and you'll be able to see it up here. Let's look at the potentiometer. I'm maxed out. I'm going to scroll it all the way down to near zero. Let's put it at 370-ish. So once I start this program, biggest should reflect that value. It did. Look at that. So 370. And we're kind of bouncing around, so it makes sense for it to be 371. Now if I move the potentiometer, now the number is, uh, where are we at? Right here, zero. So it maintains its largest value, biggest. Now if I go past it, it will remember that new value unless I push the bump switch. If I push it, I set it down to zero. And then if I move my potentiometer to a smaller number, in this case like two, biggest will reflect it. That's how I can reset it. That's kind of the nice thing in here. Push that to reset it, spin that around, and you can start it back at zero. All right, so let's stop it and let's modify this program to what they want us to do after we've done this. If you look in the top right corner of your screen, the project lead the way asks you to modify the program so that a variable closest will remember the closest distance detected by the ultrasonic distance sensor. So I have to change my variable here from biggest to closest. And we do that in a couple of spots. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it. And we're right here too. And over here. And one more. So instead of biggest, we now have closest. Oop, one more. Next thing we have to do is change potentiometer to sonar because we're looking at the ultrasonic distance sensor. Next thing we're going to have to do is one that a lot of people are going to forget about. I even did the first time I ran through this, and that's why I've done the video like six times. So I'm going to delete this greater than that was between sonar and closest, and that now needs to be less than. If the sonar is reading a smaller number than closest, then the closest picks up that new value. So let's say that the sonar starts off at 93, which is what it does start off at when nothing's in front of it. 93 centimeters, and as I move closer, maybe that number becomes 20. I'm only 20 centimeters away. That's the number I want it to remember. So when my sonar is smaller than closest, I want it to pick that value up. Now, if you don't make this next change, you're going to miss out too. You're starting off closest at zero. The sonar is not ever going to represent a zero, so we have to change that. I changed it to 100 just so it start off at a large value and then it picks up the immediate value of the sonar once we start the program. Let's compile it, see if we have any errors. We don't, and download the robot. We didn't change anything with the bump switch, so that'll still maintain the same. Once I push that button, it will reset everything. Let's start the program, and you should watch this skip right to what sonar is reading at 92. It did. Now I'm gonna use a piece of paper just so it's a little bit easier to actually make sure it hits everything. And I'm going to put that in front of sonar. Well, now it's dropped down to 37. If I go back up, you can see now it's at 40-something. And the closest value maintains the closest number it was ever at. So I keep ticking down. Now we're at 27. Maintains that. If I come down and then back up, it still maintains the smallest number. That's exactly what we wanted. 
Now let's hit the reset button with the paper all the way up at the top. It reset to 38 and I come down and it does the same thing. Now I'll move my paper all the way and just put it on my desk and once I hit the reset button, the bump switch, it should go back to its maximum number of 92 right here. And it did. You'll notice when I hold the button down, I am outside of the button sensor or sorry, button switch loop, which means closest value is set to 100 and it automatically picks up sonar when I release. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please click the like button over, uh, where's it gonna be? Over here, I'm gonna put a button where you can click to subscribe and you can also see the next video. Have a great day, everybody.